Lupita Mañana, Chapter 13 Another letter from Mamá came toward the end of the month. The news was the same. Everyone was well, and she was receiving the money. On the last day of January, Lupita came home from seven hours of harvesting cabbages. About an hour later, Salvador arrived, dressed in a dark red corduroy jacket. She at once saw it was new. Lupita handed him Mamá's latest letter to read. She stood with her arms folded and watched. Not meeting her gaze, he nodded and said, Bueno, Mamá ought to be able to pay off the money lender quickly. We're doing well by her, eh? Her voice sharp. Lupita scolded. Salvador, she will need money to live on even after she pays the money lender. He shrugged and handed her a $5 bill. I need to buy some things for myself. This is all I can send this time. Lupita looked down at the bill and then sniffed the... Air, smelling something over the tang of chili powder. Aunt Consuelo was putting into her cooking. Salvador, what is that smell? Lupita demanded. His eyes slid past hers. It is a shaving lotion I got on my birthday. One of the things you need? Lupita's voice was scornful. Salvador blushed and then looked angry. No, it was a present. Tammy gave it to me. Tammy? See. Si. A girl I know here. What a queer name. Is she a pocha, Salvador? asked Lupita. Si, Tammy Mendoza. Her sister is Lucky's new novia. Lupita sighed. Always Lucky Ruiz. Before she could ask more, Aunt Consuelo called her and Salvador to eat some tacos she had just made. To Lupita's astonishment, Salvador refused. I go to work at five o'clock tonight. Lucky will come for me in a few minutes. He's just gone to the cleaners to get his jacket. I'll eat at the cafe. Aunt Consuelo was not offended. She only laughed. Does the food taste better there, Salvador? No, but there is more of it. She chuckled, then said, Bueno, if you don't eat, it means more tacos for the rest of us. You come here, Lupita. You eat his tacos and yours too. You need to put some meat on your bones. She's too skinny, isn't she, Salvador? See, si, Lupita has always been skinny. Catarina, of course, took up the teasing. Lupita says she doesn't want a novio here, Salvador. She must think she's so skinny that no boys will ever pay attention to her. I told you I don't want anyone, Lupita burst out. The taco was burning her hand. Ignoring her, Aunt Consuelo spoke to Salvador. Your sister never goes anywhere to meet anyone her own age. All she sees are the old men who harvest with us. Aurelio never brings anyone home when he comes home. All of Elvio's friends are too young. Lupita has no friends her own age, not even little girls like herself. Consuelo folded her arms and planked herself in front of Salvador. Look here. You are Lupita's brother. You left my house and your sister to live with Lucky Ruiz. I think you should do something to see Lupita also has friends as you have. Lupita stared at her aunt in wonder and held her breath, waiting to see what Salvador would say. Lupita goes to mass, doesn't she? He mumbled. How would you know? You're never there. See, she does, and she comes right back here with us. Lupita does not meet anyone at church. Salvador shifted from one foot to the other. Lupita felt a glow of satisfaction at his discomfort. He had left her to work as a dishwasher and to have good times with fellows his own age. He had deserted his sister, leaving her to do the kind of work he had despised. All his talk about saving money was just an excuse. He threw open his hands and asked, Aunt Consuelo, what do you want me to do? I haven't got a car to take Lupita anywhere. Have you got yourself a motorcycle yet? Consuelo demanded. <clears throat> Not yet. How Salvador was scowling. Lupita stifled a giggle. Why can't you and Lucky take Lupita somewhere in Lucky's car? Lupita's too young to go around with us. We take our girls our own age. Lucky wouldn't want to take Lupita. It's his car. Salvador's face had taken on a dark, sullen look, and his eyes flicked constantly to the door. Aunt Consuelo turned to Catarina. Go and bring out the dress I got for Lupita for the Day of Three Kings. See, sí, Mama. Catarina hurried into the bedroom and came prancing back, holding the hanger with Papa's coat on it and the red velveteen dress underneath. Catarina jerked off the coat and dropped it to the floor. Then... She twirled the wire hanger to make the dress revolve in front of Salvador. Lupita put down her taco, ran to retrieve Papa's coat, 
and held it to her breast while she listened to her aunt. Look what a beautiful dress this is. Lupita has had it since the day of the three kings, but she has never once put it on. What good does it do her on a hanger? See, it is a fine dress, Salvador said, with no show of interest. Aunt Consuelo nodded. It is a fine dress. Fidencio told me today that there is to be a dance, a baile, next month on the day of St. Valentine. Lucky will play his guitar there. Is this true? See, si, there is such a dance, Salvador mumbled. Lucky will play when the musicians stop to rest. And you will be going to this dance also, Salvador? See, si. Why don't you take Lupita? Aunt Consuelo asked to Lupita's horror. Lupita, I am going to take Tammy Mendoza. Have you asked this Tammy yet? Not yet. Bueno, don't ask her. Let someone else take her. You can take your sister instead. Lupita looked from face to face, her fingers trembling as they held Papa's coat. No, no, she cried out. I don't want to go to the baile. Be quiet, Lupita, her aunt ordered. Salvador, you take your sister to the baile. You can get Lucky to pick her up in his car. Lupita can dance with many boys you and Lucky know, and you can dance with this Tammy Mendoza. Get Lucky to take both her and her sister. There must be one of Lucky's friends who does not have a novia now. Perhaps Lupita would like him. No, cried Lupita, but no one paid any heed to her. Salvador raised his head. See, si, there's Rafael. He works in the automobile tire store next to Lucky's garage. He has no sweetheart now. Bueno, then there is somebody for Lucky Lupita to dance with. You can find many partners for her, Aunt Consuelo smiled, then lifted a warning finger. But Salvador, see to it that she dances only with boys that you or Lucky know. Having won her way, she turned in triumph to Lupita. So you are going to a baile in your new red dress. I don't know how to dance, Aunt Consuelo. That should put an end to this plan. It was the truth. She had never learned anything but a few Mexican country dances at her school, and she was sure that everyone would be dancing gringo style at the baile. So many of the young pochos, Lucky and Elvio and Caterina among them, seemed to her to be half gringo. And now, Salvador, Aunt Consuelo waved her hand. Elvio and Caterina can teach you to dance. They know all the dances. You have two weeks to learn. Consuelo turned her head to Salvador. I bet you know how to dance the pocho dances, don't you? Caterina hooted as she danced in a circle around Lupita, whisking the red dress about as if it was a partner. Lupita looked past her cousin at her aunt's becoming face. Aunt Consuelo had meant well, but she did not understand how Lupita felt. What was, who was this Raphael? Lupita asked herself. What would he be like? Another lucky... Ay, they mean no. Aunt Consuelo said, Lupita, a girl never forgets her first baile. You will never forget this one, I promise you. Salvador didn't want to wait to hear more. He turned on his heel and stormed out of the house. Lupita ran after him. What's wrong with you, Salvador? What's happening to you? She cried. Nothing, nothing, he muttered, then ran forward to get into Lucky's car, which had just pulled up. Elvio and Caterina were delighted to teach Lupita to dance. When one tired, the other took up the task, putting Lupita through her paces. As soon as the, the school bus dropped them off in the late afternoon, they turned on their father's radio, found a gringo dance music station, and set about teaching her not only the gringo dances, but also la salsa, the fast-moving dances much favored by young California pochos. Though she was often weary after her day's work, Lupita paid close attention. She enjoyed learning to dance more than she had thought she would. She even learned to like gringo music once she became accustomed to it. By February 13th, Elvio pronounced her ready to go to the baile. At least she would not humiliate Salvador or Rafael by her poor dancing. Lupita had written Mama nothing of her quarrels with Salvador. She continued to send what money she could, chiefly her own earnings. By denying herself all treats, she managed to mail close to the same amount she and Salvador had previously sent together. But now she wrote that they were going to a baile the day of the St. Valentine. That would please Mama and make her think all was well between her and Salvador. Lupita put down her pencil and took a deep breath. She would try to make her shell very hard against whatever might happen at the dance. But perhaps she need not. She might enjoy it after all. 
Saturday afternoon, St. Valentine's Day, the Ruiz household was in a bustle. After Lupita had come home from the fields, she showered, washed her hair, and got into her petticoat. Carefully, she put on her first pair of nylon pantyhose while Aunt Consuelo braided her hair and pinned the braids on top of her head. Then, Lupita slid into the red velveteen dress. It fit her fairly well, and the deep color made her gold-toned skin glow. Lupita looked at herself in Consuelo's small bathroom mirror and was amazed to say that, see that she looked pretty. Though she had no coat to wear, Consuelo loaned her a black hand-crocheted shawl for the occasion. With Irela beside her, Lupita sat in splendor on the old sofa while Consuelo sat across from her, admiring her handiwork. Caterina and Elvio had gone to the can cinema with Fidencio and his wife, but before they left, Elvio had inspected Lupita and said, She looks okay, Mama. Aunt Consuelo and the younger children waited in the house with Lupita. Time went by, and still Salvador had not arrived. Finally, the youngest cousins went sleepily to bed. Lupita looked nervously at Consuelo, but her aunt only said, He'll come. At 9.30, Lupita heard the rattling sound of Lucky's car pulling into the yard. Then, Salvio was at, Salvador was at the door. Dressed in a dark blue coat and trousers, pale pink shirt, and deep red tie, he looked like any other pocho she had seen at church. He gave Lupita a quick look from her crown of braids to her black sandals, grunted, and said, Come on, then. Have a good time, Aunt Consuelo called after them as they went out to the car. I ride with Lucky in the front, Salvador said curtly. You get in the back seat, Lupita. Where are the other girls? asked Lupita, peering into the empty back seat. We took them to the dance first, then we came after you, Salvador replied. Salvador, where is this Rafael I am to meet? Lupita nervously grasped her brother's arm. At the dance with the girls. Get in. Hurry up, Lupita. He shook off her hand and got into the car. Lupita opened the convertible's rear door and sat down. Without a glance behind him, Lucky put the car into gear and rapidly turned it around in the yard. The sudden motion threw Lupita off balance and sent her sprawling across the slippery plastic upholstery. As she got up, she was struck by a powerful rush of cold air. Instantly chilled, she pulled the shawl over her head as far as possible, then sank down out of the wind. By the time they reached the hall, she was covered with goose flesh. As Lucky searched for a spot in the brightly lit parking lot, Lupita sat up and let the shawl fall onto her shoulders. She strove to calm herself and to put a look of confidence on her face, but her teeth wouldn't stop chattering. Once Lucky parked the car, he and Salvador got out. Without a look at Lupita, Lucky started swiftly toward the hall. Salvador opened her door and said, Get out now, Lupita. I'll take you inside to meet Rafael. He was dancing with Tammy when we left, so he couldn't come along. Lupita saw a muscle at the corner of her brother's jaw tighten. Salvador did not like the idea of anyone else dancing with Tammy. Come on, hurry up, Lupita. He reached into the pocket of his trousers and brought out a pale green ticket, which he shoved into her hand. I paid your way into the dance. Give this ticket to the man at the front door. He turned and headed toward the noisy hall. Lupita got out of the car slowly. She was frightened. Salvador seemed to hate her, and the hall would be full of strange bochos. Her stomach felt filled with ice. But she went to the other door Salvador had gone through and shoved her ticket to the man. He smiled down at her, and she took courage from his smile. Suddenly, she felt Salvador's hand snatching away Aunt Consuelo's shawl. He gave it to a gray-haired lady, who put it on a shelf above a long row of coats on hangers. Salvador grabbed Lupita by the wrist and pulled her out of the anteroom to the very edge of the dance floor. Lupita gasped aloud. Hundreds of people filled the room. They stood along the walls or danced under the ceiling festooned with red and white crepe paper. Almost everyone was young, and they were dressed in their very best. The boys looked as elegant as Salvador and Lucky, and the girls wore beautiful long dresses of peach, turquoise, yellow, pink, violet, blue, green, and white. Some glittered with silver and gold sequins. The air was like a flower garden, filled with their perfumes. <laughs>